Shiny TV, sponsored by shinywhitebox.com. <laughs> On the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to KWTV 0010. Today, from the planet Hoth, where Imperial walkers coming from that way will probably attack the Rebel Generator situated over there. We will be in the middle of the action shooting nice footage of snow speeders, rebel forces and imperial forces clashing down to make George Lucas want to make another movie and this time a proper one. Well not really. We are however in snowy Eupen which is in the Dutch, uh, the Dutch, no the German speaking part of Belgium and today we are jo joined by uh, millions of millions of snowflakes. So it's freezing out here. I'm going to wrap up and tell you what you can expect in this episode of KWTV. We are going to talk about the whole Gmail thing. I'm going to show you how to set up a Gmail account, use the Google Calendar and use Google Docs, but we're going to go one step further. How about turning those applications into a fourth operating system that you can use on Windows, Linux and Mac systems? I'm going to show you how to use the whole Google thing and use it offline using an application called Google Gears. So we're going to do all of that and more. I'm also going to show you the Google Desktop application and turn your entire Google experience into an online, offline uh, experience. Sounds pretty great to me. It's time to kick off and show you how it's done. The first thing we're going to do is make a Google account. Go to www.gmail.com and click on sign up for a new account. You will be asked for some information as your first name and your last name and of course the desired login name. Check if this name is available by going to check availability. In this case the uh, login name is already in use so I'm going to think of something else. And that is actually also going to be my email address, KWTV feedback is still available, and then you get to choose a password. Now make sure it's kind of complicated, has lowercase, uppercase, characters or numbers in it, and Google will tell you whether it's weak or strong. In this case it's a weak password, so we're going to think of something more complicated. That looks okay. And then you have two options, to be remembered on this computer, so the computer remembers your password, and to enable web history, which lets Google kind of remember what you search for and what you visit. For security reasons, I would advise you to deselect both of them. If you forget your password, you can actually let it be sent to you by answering a secret question. In this case, I've uh, thought up my own question. What is my favorite TV show? And the answer is quite obvious KWTV. You'll, ask, you'll be asked for a secondary email address, that is if you lose your password the system will send your password to this secondary email address. You'll be asked for your location, in this case that's going to be Belgium, there it is, and you will do the CAPTCHA. I hate the CAPTCHA, I am not very good at the CAPTCHA at all. Agree to the terms of service, blah, 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 and click to accept the account. Oh, okay, I have uh, fracked up the uh, whole CAPTCHA thing, so I re-enter my password and try again. I-N-G-R-A-G-N-O-L whatever. I accept. Create my account. And here we go. Okay. Click on I'm ready. Show me my account. And your Gmail account is completely ready. You will have your inbox, your start, your chats, your sent mail, your drafts, all mail, everything that's available in the Gmail mailbox. Well done. Once we have our Gmail inbox set up, we're going to click Settings. 
There are a lot of settings to choose from. One of them that I always activate is to display 100 email messages per page instead of the general 50. You can select a picture that everyone will see when you email them, or you can select uh, whether you want your contacts to have their pictures displayed, yes or no. This is especially important in uh, Google Talk. There's a signature that you can enter to be uh, set on the bottom of your every email that you send out. In this case, we're going to nicely put the URL in. You can have personal level indicators, which uh, shows you a little arrow, which uh, appears if they are messages sent to you alone. Snippets, which will show you little parts of what's in the email, and a vacation responder that will auto-respond for a certain period of time. Uh, the outgoing message encoding and the browser connection, uh, the outgoing message encoding is not important, but the browser connection, it must be set to always use HTTPS. As you can see, I have reloaded the page and now I have an HTTPS connection to my mailbox, which means that the traffic is now encrypted. So very important to set that. You can actually tell Gmail as what sender to send out the emails that you send out via Gmail, so you can even use another one, and you can pop three mail from other accounts into your Gmail account. You have 7,291 megabytes available, and you can even upgrade that storage by going to a pro account. This is the setting that lets you change your account settings, and this is uh, the setting that you can click if you want to use Google Apps for domains. There are no folders in Gmail, so there are only labels. Each email is labeled with a certain label, and according to these labels, you can search through your emails and catalog everything. Filters are, email, are Gmail's way of working with rules. So you can set a filter whenever an email comes in. It will process that email and put it not in a certain folder, but tag it with a certain label. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it works pretty fine. So I said if the message has feedback, apply the label feedback and create the filter. So next time a message comes in with a subject that says feedback, it will be applied the label feedback. You can access your Gmail account using uh, POP, IMAP or other ways. You can forward your emails to another email address. Download your emails via POP3. Settings are enabled by default, so disable that, that's security. And you can even uh, use IMAP. To configure your mail clients to use these interfaces, click on the configuration instructions. They will show you how it's done. Go a little bit further in settings. And you can also use Google Talk in Gmail. This is the chat tab. I've told it to, to save my chat history. You can enable voice and video chat using Google Talk. And you can tell it where to put the chat box. The chat box will actually enable in your Gmail page, which is very convenient. This is something that's very important. Only allow people that have explicitly approved the chat with me to see if I'm online. Otherwise, Google will make that decision for you. I've enabled sounds and emoticons just by default. Web clips is some spam that arrives, uh, that, you know, just some spam messages at the top of your mail, but I usually, you know, put those off. Those are little web snippets that you can choose, but I found them to be very annoying. But what is cool is themes. You can change the standard layout of your Gmail by changing the themes. So we have a lot of themes to choose from. We're going to pick one, see how it turns out. Here, the pebbles one. See? Now you have all kinds of pebbles and rocks. You can even choose a different one if it uh, doesn't suit you. Sunsets, also one. So there are a lot of them to choose from.
There are some that are um, tied to your location, so I think that's a little bit of weird stuff. But I don't know what planets has to do with my location. If I type in Mars, I'll probably see Mars. This is a very funky and futuristic Gmail interface, other than the uh, standard blue and white that were used from Google. I'm going to go to the settings menu one more time. And we're going to go to the Labs tab. These are new beta features that are not enabled by default. Tell you which one to enable. We'll enable offline access to your Gmail, which is uh, well something we're going to use later. We're going to enable tasks, so you can enable tasks in your Gmail. Have a task list there. Quick links isn't really interesting. Special stars isn't really interesting. Pictures and chat, you can enable those if you want to. And there are a lot of other ones. Email addict to tell you when to stop. Right side chat's one that I enable always. That leaves the chat box on the right side of the screen, kind of nicely leveling it out. You can also put the labels on the right side. You can have height unread counts. You can set it to reply to all. There are several settings. You would uh, have to take a look at that. You can even drag and drop the navigation bar to somewhere else on the screen. If you use a lot of labels, you can use the go to label function. You can create a new document from an email if you want to. And uh, I usually enable the Google Calendar gadget, which is going to be very handy when we do that, and also the Google Docs gadget. This will integrate your Google Calendar, which we'll configure later on, and your Google Docs with your Gmail interface. As you can see, we have the Google Calendar here on the left, and we have the Google Chat on the right. And we also have a little tab there that says Google Doc. Oh. Show you that Google Docs there. So as you can see, you've completely revamped your standard Gmail interface. Well done. In the next part of this manual, we're going to start with Google Docs. As you can see, we've got the chat window and everything all up and running, so it's time to take it one step further. To do this, open a new tab and go to www.docs.google.com or just hit docs.google.com. Since you're already logged into your Gmail account, you can just press continue to go to your Docs setting right away. As you can see, you're in Docs, and if I go back to my Gmail page, I will have my documents links up on top. And um, if I load the Google Docs app again, you'll see that it is activated and that I can now access the Google Docs. So I'll see if I can make a new document. I've got the settings in Dutch, should be in English actually. So let's see if we can change that. There you go. English US. Let's see if we can refresh that. There you go, that's in English. And you see, we don't have any documents yet, so let's make some. New document. And it's a great online, um, well, basically a word pro processor. I'm going to call our new document test document. Hit OK. Hit save and close. And uh, it takes a while before it to populate, so you possibly need to refresh. See all items. Let's try again. Another test. Test. Okay. Save and close. Hello. There. Save and close. That should do the trick. There you go.